humans, it's just Martine and today I'm going to be reading sequels to books I've never read before. This is actually a very Martine type video. <laughs> My sister jokes with me all the time that I will read literally anything. It doesn't have to be something I will like. As long as I have access to it, I will read it. And one thing that happens frequently to me, especially at the Dollar Tree where I get a lot of my physical books, is that I'll get a book, I'll think I know that it's not a sequel or not part of a series, and then it turn out to be very wrong. Or sometimes I just read the synopsis, I say, this sounds really interesting, I see that it's part of a series, I say, the synopsis still sounds really interesting, I'm going to get it and read it anyway. So I fairly frequently read sequels to books I've never read, but not in such a directed way as this video. Lots of different types of sequels in here to talk about. Enjoy the video. The Rule of Mirrors. Let's discuss it. I finished this up last night. I actually read most of this yesterday. I was on page like 70 something and, and then I read the rest of it ostensibly in one sitting. So that's good. It was definitely like a fast read once I got into it. I was doing reading sprints with friends and I would update them on how many pages I'd read in the sprint and they'd be like, that's a lot. I'd be like, it's, it's a quick read. So I enjoyed it. Overall, I'm giving it a 3.5 out of five. I'm first gonna tell you a little bit about it, but then I'm going to tell you about my thoughts uh, about reading this as a sequel without reading the first book. So this is about a girl and you're actually getting two separate perspectives from her because her consciousness is split in two. She wakes up in the body of Althea Flores, who is a girl who got in this terrible motorcycle accident and has been in a coma for a very long time. And she has none of Althea's uh, memories, only her own. And she's the same consciousness as Rosie Sinclair, who, whose separate part of consciousness is at the beginning of this book, locked in the vault of dreamers and is being mined for her dreams, which is a terrifying thing. So she's kept permanently like sedated and asleep. She's lost a lot of weight while she's been there because she's getting only her nutrients through like this port. And this book follows those two consciousness, the, the two bits of consciousness from the same person. And they're both trying to figure out what happened. And they're both trying to convince people that they are who they say they are. And they eventually find each other and they confront this person who's been mining them, essentially. Reading it without reading the first book was not actually a terrible idea. This wasn't quite as cut and dry about the coma and what she did and did not remember as I originally thought when I first picked this up from the Dollar Tree. However, I still felt like it read fine in that way. I wouldn't necessarily say it reads fine as a standalone because the end is definitely open for the third book in the trilogy. However, I don't feel the need to pick up the third book in the trilogy this book did exactly what I wanted it to do. I didn't feel confused at all about the world building. I thought it was very well described, but not to the point that people who had read the first book would be like, oh my gosh, this is so boring. Like it was minimal in its details. It wasn't info dumpy, but you got a sense of what was going on, even though it was a relatively complex world. And I thought it was an interesting world. However, when I read it and I found out the things that happened in the first book, I'm not sure I would have enjoyed the first book really, but I did enjoy this one. So that's an interesting dichotomy. I obviously don't know that since I haven't read it, but this seemed like the part of the trilogy that was the most interesting to me, where the two parts of her consciousness have officially split. They don't know what's happening to the other at the time. And they're both going on their separate journeys to try and get uh, similar but different motivations completed, right? They both have their own goals, but they're the same person like they have all the same memories. The two main characters that was really one main character but the two main characters were both very interesting. I liked seeing where their thoughts converged and diverged. I thought that was really well done and I definitely loved a lot of the world building about like the reality television show that they were originally part of and what that implies for their sense of privacy in their day-to-day -day life. Ideas about autonomy and what of our consciousness we do and do not own for ourselves or what does and does not belong to us. So it was an interesting read. I felt like I was perfectly fine reading it without reading the first and it was an overall good time. Not only is my next book for this a sequel, it's actually the finale to a trilogy. And I didn't know that until literally I read the author's note. Like I knew it was a sequel. That's obviously the whole premise of this video, but I thought it was a duology. And then she was like, thanks to all the people who helped me write this trilogy. Or if it was a trilogy, I thought this was the middle book. No, this was the last book in a trilogy. <laughs> and I have to say, 
it was a pretty good end to the trilogy. Obviously, I haven't read the actual trilogy, but like, I had a good time with this, and it leads me to believe that the overall scope of this was pretty good, because sometimes in trilogies, especially like dystopian sci-fi trilogies like this, the third book is really bad. Like, I hate to say it, but like Allegiant, Mockingjay, just absolute chaos, total nutso, whatever. This was good and made good sense. I also felt like I knew it was happening at all times. I was dropped into this world, sure, but it was revealed to me and it reminded me several times along the course of the book what had happened up to this point. And sure, I didn't get every little detail because I didn't read the other books, but I wasn't lost. Like I could enjoy this book perfectly fine not having read the others because I knew. And so, whereas some trilogies, it would be a bad standalone book because even though it would make sense as a standalone, you'd get enough information, it's just a bad third book. This made it a perfectly acceptable standalone to read in my opinion, because I knew it was happening. It was continuing off the first two, but we got the background and it was more just, this is the story. It really felt, I don't know about the other two, how independent they felt, but this felt like it could stand on its own as a book. And that's incredibly important when it comes to series for me, because the point of a series is yes, they're connected, but they're separate books. Otherwise, just put it together and make a huge book. Like, you've seen the Outlander books, some of them over a thousand pages. Authors don't have to be scared of putting these huge books together if that's the story. But like, this was a separate, complete story, and I appreciated that. Did I say I gave this four stars? I don't believe I said that. I gave this four stars. This is about a girl, and a lot, a lot of things have happened so far in her life, obviously, because this is the third in a trilogy. Where we are now at the beginning of this is that Clementine, that's the lead, she's on the surface of her planet and we're just getting this glimpse that these battleships from a feuding planet have arrived. So at the start of this, it's very much, there's an alien invasion happening right now. And I'm with some people that I trust and with some people that I don't, all is hectic. And it's bad that they're on the surface because there's some underground civilization in like the core of this planet where it would be much safer, where the Mardenites would not know that these people are residing, but they're on the surface where the Mardenites can see them and throw poison gas at them and things like that. So we start off there. We spent a good while trying to get into the core. I have to say, there was a moment where I was like, is this just going to be the same thing over and over again, where they escape, they're found, escape, they're found, escape, they're found, escape, they're found, and at the end they get to the core or something? I was worried it would be a horrific second book syndrome or something. Turns out it's a third book, so like, you know? But they, they get to the core, eventually, it didn't actually take too long. Just for a moment when I believed it would take the whole book, I was dreading it. But they got there, they got to the core, you got the sense of what the core was like, and the leaders of the society are called the developers and they're very much a group of dictators. It's kind of like an oligarchy, but like very much not well put together. Bad vibes all around from the developers, especially Commander Charlie, who's like, seems to be the main one in charge. They're all supposed to be equal, but he's really taken it under his uh, control. And this has lots of discussions about genetic modification and our relationships with extraterrestrials and the miscommunication that happens between species sometimes, the same way that there's a miscommunication, is it in The Sparrow or in Children of God? One of Mary Doria Russell's books. The miscommunication about species. No, 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 I'm thinking the wrong book entirely. The same way that Defenders, which I read for the last 12 TBRs of Christmas in Harris when my boyfriend picked my TBR, the same way that like, there was peace between them and then the humans were like, heck no, no peace. And then it started wars and like everybody died because of it. So humans made an uh-oh, again, shocking. So this book follows the conclusion where like the main character is figuring out, oh my God, these beings are here in peace actually. And the developers are, she already knew they were the bad, bad guys, but they're definitely bad guys. And so she's leading this rebellion to try and escape the developers, essentially, before the developers blow up the entire planet. Because the developers, they're like, oh my gosh, alien invasion, we're going to turn the core into a battle station, defuse a bomb that's going to blow up the planet, and everybody that's still on the surface, they're like children in work camps on the surface, we're gonna blow all them up, and hopefully we'll blow up the Mardenites in the process, and then we'll escape into space. And Clementine is like, don't do that. So it's definitely a race against the clock. They have like 15 hours once they decide to make the bomb to get everything settled so that the world doesn't literally explode. 
and kill everyone, basically. I had a fun time reading this. For my next book, I read Catalyst, which is actually the end of a duology, and I ended up giving this three stars. So now in this, we've had the second book in a trilogy, the last book in a trilogy, and the second book in a duology. So all different kinds of sequels that I'm reading here. The world building was okay. There were some things I was confused about that weren't, I feel, adequately redescribed in the beginning of the book so that I didn't fully know what was happening. And that's always really important to me in a sequel, not just if I'm reading it without the first book, but even if I am reading it with the first book, because I forget books pretty much as soon as I read them. So if the sequel's not gonna tell me what happened and help me reestablish where I am, like, that's no good. So this did a little bit of that, but like not enough. And then the overall plot of this was kind of all over the place. In the middle section, I was getting like Handmaid's Tale vibes, like not nearly as good as Handmaid's Tale, but like those types of vibes because they went into a state that was all about like fertility. But in this book, there are some people with genetic mutations that give them specific powers. So like the main character of this book, Celia, she has a longevity trait. So she's going to live for a very long time. All of them had very weird names. I don't even know how to pronounce Micah's last name. It's just K-W. Like it's spelled KW. How do you say that? So the plot wasn't always there for me. The names were very strange. The characters, I cared about them a little, but like not too much. The good thing is that most of the characters were very distinct. So I at least like knew, there were a lot of characters, but I generally knew what was happening. I'm not sure that this would be viewed as like a solid conclusion to a duology. Like it did wrap everything up, but I'm not sure how readers of the first book would react this one obviously because I didn't read the first book but whereas say evolution was like a really great ending uh, this one was just like okay so I don't really have much to say about it so I'm not going to talk your ear off about it but uh, this book is done now next I read daylight by David Baldacci I'm giving this 3.5 stars. It took a while for me to get into it, and then I was pretty into it for a while. This is part of a series about this FBI agent named Atlee Pine, who, when she was six years old, her twin sister was abducted, and she's trying to find her all these years later. This is, I think, the third book in the series. I think there are maybe five in total. The point is, as she's trying to find her sister, she accidentally keeps getting caught up in cases around her personal investigations. This was definitely interesting, and I am intrigued to get like answers about her sister, because we got some answers in this, but obviously I want more answers. I did pick it up because it has twins in it and I'd recently read David Baldacci and enjoyed it. So I was like, unlike The Hit, which is the last David Baldacci book I read, was also part of a series that I hadn't read the first book in. This one, I think probably goes a lot better in its series, unfortunately. This one's pretty new, copyright 2020. So I don't even know if the series is finished being released, but I, I feel like it is. I thought Atlee was like a pretty good character, but there's a certain point, and it happens pretty quickly, when you read crime-related books where you're just tired of following FBI agents doing everything. I did enjoy the aspect of the CID agent in this one, John Puller, uh, so we had the army pulled in as well, which did give it a slightly different dynamic. At least for this, you understand why Atlee does things slightly out of her jurisdiction, because she's technically on leave from the bureau to figure out what happened to her sister. One thing that's really hard for me to get over is when I read a procedural of any kind or a book that features an FBI agent and they just go around breaking laws, and I'm like, okay, cool, you got the bad guy in the end, but you won't be able to lock up the bad guy because you ruined all the evidence because you obtained it illegally. You can't go back and undo that now. I've read books in the past where that's happened and then in the latter books, they've like acknowledged that that was a problem and that they can't do it again. <laughs> and I appreciated that, but anything that she did wrong, you were like, well, she's technically, like she keeps saying FBI, but like she's also not working for the FBI right now. But yeah, this wasn't my favorite Baldacci out of now the two I've read, <laughs> but it was pretty interesting and I pretty much understood everything that was happening in this series without having read it. Granted, I don't know if that's because this is the perfect of uh, the perfect book in the series to pick up if you haven't read any of the others, particularly because like she's 
just gotten a huge lead before the contents of this book, so she's following that lead in this. I can't say because I haven't read the others, but I definitely understood what was happening in this one, which is good. And I enjoyed it. I just probably would have enjoyed it a little more within the context of the series, but I don't think it mattered that much. So overall, I think I had a really good time reading these sequels to books I've never read. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and comment down below. Have you ever read a sequel to a book that you've never read before? And was it on purpose? And subscribe for more reading, writing, and college lifestyle content. And until next time, bye humans, bye!